As the world struggles with the coronavirus pandemic, another plague is threatening the lives of millions. In February, swarms of locusts had spread to nine countries in Africa in what is considered to be the largest outbreak to hit the region in over 70 years. Meanwhile, locust swarms have erupted in parts of Pakistan and along the Indian border, with reports of new hatchlings sighted in Iran earlier this month. East Africa, which remains the worst hit region, is facing a second wave of locusts that the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, or the FAO, estimates could be up to 20 times larger than current numbers. But what caused this plague of biblical proportions? The FAO points to the effects of climate change in the region, which have led to abnormal weather patterns and increased rains over the last couple of years. The more moist sands allow females in swarms to lay up to 80 eggs in the soil. They can take up to two months to hatch, but when locusts are swarming, this process happens much quicker, less than two weeks, in fact after which the hatchlings rise to the surface as nymphs or hoppers, where they molt or shed their skins a number of times and come together to seek out vegetation, forming large groups referred to as hopper bands. And these bands can travel up to 1.7 kilometers a day. When the conditions are right, they can develop into pink immature adults in just three and a half weeks. And after a few test flights with their new wings, they take off, following the wind at distances of up to 150 kilometers per day. At this point, the young adults are at their most voracious and can form swarms. Now, even a small swarm of only one square kilometer can contain up to 150 million locusts, capable of devouring enough vegetation to feed 35,000 people a day. To put this in perspective, the FAO has recorded swarms sweeping through eastern Africa that are larger than the size of Manhattan, more than 60 square kilometers, containing billions upon billions of locusts. And as they mature in swarms, locusts alter their behavioral patterns and even their color, turning into the iconic yellow and black spotted insects in a process called gregarization. By now, they're sexually mature and the females are ready to lay eggs again, after which the locusts continue to move until they die off, just in time for the new hatchlings to rise at numbers 20 times larger with each generation. In 2018, two cyclones dumped heavy rainfall on the southern Arabian Peninsula that created an ideal environment for the desert locusts to breed. In an interview with Wired, Michel Lecoq, former director of the French Agricultural Research Center for International Development, explained how they were able to multiply so quickly. The main problem is that these exceptional rains occurred in an area where there is a lot of insecurity, wars, and so on. So the initial stages of the upsurge of the outbreaks were not detected in time. As a result, in nine months, three generations of locusts were able to spawn, causing numbers to increase 8,000 fold. The swarms were able to leapfrog over the Red Sea and into the Horn of Africa. Cyclone Pawan's landfall in December 2019 triggered heavy rainfall and flooding in Somalia that saw above average vegetation in the country, presenting ideal situations for the swarms to increase and spread. Experts estimate the locusts decimated almost 30% of the pasture they landed on in Kenya. And heavy rains in January and February allowed females to lay new eggs, which saw them spread to Tanzania, then north into Uganda and South Sudan, then back southwards into the DRC. Right now, the rains are beginning, the, uh, the short rains are beginning. And if the farmers will not be able to grow the, the crops early enough, there will be a challenge in terms of availability of various foods in the future, given that if the locust infestation continue without being controlled, it is going to impact a lot in the availability of food. And the rate at which the locusts are devastating crops is alarming. The FAO has warned that in excess of 20 million people are at severe risk of starvation and famine in the region and potentially a further 15 million more in war-torn Yemen. And the widespread malnutrition caused by the plagues only spells further danger as the coronavirus continues its spread through Africa, particularly in regions of Somalia where political insecurity and terrorist activity restricts access of aid. Dominic Bergeon, director of FAO's Emergency and Resilience, described the severity of the situation in an interview with Africa Renewal magazine. Our focus is the concern that as the number of infections in vulnerable countries grows, 
among populations who are already malnourished, weak, and vulnerable to disease, a crisis within a crisis could emerge. And that, in a vicious feedback loop, will leave more people weaker and vulnerable to the virus. The FAO has overseen the training of more than 750 personnel to combat the local swarms, and as of mid-April, over 2,400 square kilometers of land have been treated with pesticides throughout the East African region. But more is needed while air support is hard to come by, and the coronavirus and fears of its spreading make these countermeasures all the more challenging. For example, when you want to load an airplane early in the morning, there is also the restrictions of timing and also locating the swamps because of the curfew. However, we are trying to come up with innovative ways, like reducing the number of populations that are being met at once for the training, as well as also engaging the security officers so that they can allow a small extension of time for the lockers, the scouts, as well as the operation team. And with respect to guidelines set by the FAO, many of the affected countries do not stockpile pesticides to prevent the collection of potentially dangerous and obsolete products, again, a problem compounded by COVID-19. The biggest challenge we are facing at the moment is the supply of pesticides. And we have delays because global air freight has been reduced significantly. Our absolute priority is to prevent a breakdown in pesticide stocks in each country. That will be dramatic for rural populations whose livelihoods and food security depend on the success of our control campaign. And as cross-border lockdowns come into effect to curb the coronavirus spread, some countries have been left in the lurch. Somalia is over three weeks behind on pesticide shipments due to COVID-19 delays. And Uganda's agricultural minister, Vincent Sempija, raised concerns about the delivery of 8,600 litres of pesticide from Japan that's been delayed due to coronavirus measures, which means they can't take advantage of aerial spraying as the most effective way to stop locusts from swarming. Consequently, the nation has deployed over 2,000 army personnel for ground spraying operations that could potentially further coronavirus infections. Despite the risks, Sempija still insists that farmers plant their crops for the harvest season. Due to COVID-19 control measures in place in the country right now, there are skeletal staff supporting the field control activities. Farming communities in the affected communities are, however, encouraged to take advantage of the recent rains and plant crops to avert a possible food crisis. The FAO recently scaled up its desert locust appeal from around $76 million in February to over $153 million from donors and organizations around the world. As of mid-April, they were still more than $40 million short. And if the locusts continue to breed and spread unchecked, the current swarms could expand. The FAO warns that another generation could spawn by June, meaning they could multiply by 400-fold, leaving millions of lives dependent on the harvest season at even more risk of malnutrition and the coronavirus.